Hello, I'm Brian Pierce, the Director of the Information Innovation Office at DARPA. The first director of an information technology office at DARPA was J.C.R. Licklider, who said in 1960, in not too many years, human brains and computing machines will be coupled together very tightly, and the resulting partnership will think as no human brain has ever thought. Advances in AI over the decades since 1960 have made it possible for machines to partner more with humans. As shown here, Technology has evolved the role of the machine in human-machine systems from merely a tool here on the left to a better tool and then to a partnership where the machine has the potential to function much more than a tool. I use a clean sheet of blueprint paper to indicate this potential. And in my talk here today, I will focus on an important first step towards the engineering of the human-machine partnership. Namely, we need to first understand what we want from the partnership before engaging in the familiar engineering process of design, build, and test. In other words, we need to specify the requirements before beginning design. And this is important because, as the old saying goes, you get what you ask for. Consider the Internet as an example. The Internet starting with the first four nodes created by DARPA in 1969, shown here on the left, to the billions of users today, the Internet has boosted our productivity and economy to incredible heights. Unfortunately, it has also opened avenues for bad behavior by a spectrum of threats ranging from individuals to nation states. And this really is not surprising when we look at the original goals for the Internet, shown here on the right, with the aspect of connectivity as the main goal at the top of the list and accountability or security as the bottommost secondary goal. We got the internet we asked for. And thus it is imperative that we ask the right questions about what we want from AI-enhanced human-machine partnerships. A natural first question to ask is what do we want the partnership to do? I like to answer this question through the progression of AI in terms of three waves which I'll describe as follows. The first wave of AI is also known as handcrafted knowledge or rule-based systems, with three applications featured here from left to right. Doing the planning for the logistics of shipping containers, doing the preparation of tax forms, and doing the game of chess. First wave AI is effective in narrow applications such as these, but it must be pre-programmed by human experts and has no capability for learning. The second wave of AI is also known as statistical or machine learning. Two well-known consumer applications of machine learning are shown here, featuring voice recognition by Siri on the left and face recognition by cameras on the right. Now, I should note that Siri is the direct result of a major investment in AI by DARPA over 10 years ago through a program called Personalized Assistant That Learns, or PAL. Second wave AI, or machine learning, today requires large amounts of data to train functions like deep neural networks that can, for an example, classify images. But once again, these machine learning functions can address relatively narrow applications. A computer today using second wave AI could be trained to identify most, if not all, the objects in the following scene, such as the man, the sofa, the bowl, and possibly even the fact that the man is eating something. This computer, though, would fail badly when it comes to inferring what the man is likely doing in the scene, which is sitting down to watch a suspenseful movie or perhaps a sports event on TV. Well, and if it is a sports event, then something unexpected has just occurred for the man's team. Humans can make this inference readily because of how we use contextual reasoning to integrate that glow on the back wall, the, the shadow of the man's head, the full bowl of popcorn, and the expression on the man's face, along with all the other objects in the scene. And so third wave AI, or contextual reasoning, strives towards more human-like intelligence in being able to recognize new situations and make inferences about them with little to no a priori training data. Equipping machines with more human-like communication and reasoning capabilities will make it possible for humans to teach and correct machines more effectively as they interact and cooperate on more advanced, high-value tasks, thereby opening the door to stronger symbiotic partnerships between people and machines. 
The three waves of AI provide us with a good sense of what we want the partnership to do. But this is not sufficient. We need to ask a second question. As AI moves machines from mere tools to partners, the question of what we want AI-enhanced human-machine partnerships to be assumes greater importance. For example, we want a tool to be safe, easy to use, and durable. As seen here in the progression of the role of the machine, we see subordinate as the first step in the machine as a partner. And we want this subordinate to be explainable, trustworthy, resilient, and possess common sense. Of course, there are other to be qualities that could be added to both tool and subordinate, which really depend on what we want the machine to do. I will now highlight a few DARPA programs that are developing technologies to help meet the to be requirements shown here. Our explainable AI program is developing a new generation of machine learning techniques that are able to provide a rationale that explains conclusions reached by the machine learning system, such as shown here in the chart, where on the left you see a subset of the training images used to develop the neural network in the center. We then introduce an image outside the training set. And the system comes back with the conclusion, and this is an image coming from the top, it comes back with a conclusion that it is a cat. But in addition to this conclusion, an explanation is provided. It is a cat because it has particular shaped ears, it has fur and other characteristics. Now this explanation is important to the human user on the right who bears ultimate responsibility for the decision. If current trends continue, future autonomous systems will need to perform increasingly complex and sensitive missions, and machine learning AI will be a critical part of such systems. However, if developers, users, and senior leaders are to feel confident enough to deploy and use AI-aided systems, then we want these systems to explain the rationale and their recommendations, decisions, and actions be delivered in a manner that human users understand and trust. Today, most machine learning systems provide no explanation, or the explanation they do provide is too detailed and at the wrong level of abstraction. Our program is developing the tools needed to help build explainable AI systems. In addition to being explainable and trustworthy, we want our AI subordinate to be resilient and dependable, things we would ask of any partner. Machine learning, based on deep neural networks for image classification, can be vulnerable to physical perturbations of the object in question. So take, for example, the stop sign shown here on the left. It turns out that the placement of stickers, in this case black and white stickers, placing these in particular locations on the sign results in the image classifier misinterpreting the stop sign as a 45 mile per hour speed limit about 85% of the time. Now, human beings have no problem with this alteration of the sign because we really tend to key on the octagonal shape and the red color of the sign. But it looks like the machine learning system here is using the letters of the sign to distinguish it from the speed limit. While this misinterpretation persists even as the vehicle approaches the sign, and instead of braking, it could accelerate with potentially disastrous consequences. So we have started a new program called Guaranteeing AI Robustness Against Deception, or GARD, with the goal to strengthen the resilience of machine learning AI systems in situations such as these. Here we have a picture of a cat sitting on a suitcase. Today's machine learning would be able to identify the cat in the suitcase and actually generate the caption at the top of the chart, cat is sitting on top of suitcase. But what would be difficult, if not impossible, for today's machine learning is answering that question on the right, will this cat fit in the suitcase? And the primary reason is that today's machine learning is completely devoid of common sense. Our machine common sense program is really working to address these challenges. An area of particular focus is what we call naive physics or a basic understanding of how the physical world works, which would help a machine answer the question and situation as presented here in this chart. Now, answering that question requires cognition, not just recognition of the cat and the suitcase. A machine with a basic common sense of the physical dimensions of objects and spaces and a rudimentary spatial reasoning capability would be able to predict whether the cat could fit in the suitcase. Now, a machine with even more sense, say about the requirements of living organisms, would be able to reason about the advisability of putting the cat in the suitcase. 
and a machine with a moral sense, say about the humanity of placing a feeling sentient being in a confined space, would be able to reason about the morality of putting the cat in the suitcase. Explainability, trustworthiness, resilience, and being commonsensical are just a few of the to be requirements that DARPA is working on for the case of the role of the machine as a subordinate. As shown here, the role of the machine does not stop at subordinate, but extends to teammate and even leader. And on the right, I sketch what I would want the machine to be as a teammate and leader, and I'm sure all of you have your own ideas. In closing, I emphasize the importance of asking the right questions about what we want from AI-enhanced human-machine partnerships, because you do get what you ask for. Thus, it is important to not only ask what we want the partnership to do, but what we want it to be.